The Biden administration is set to impose new emission standards for heavy duty engines that will most definitely strike a blow to everyone from single owner operators to owners of large fleets. All of this is likely to occur during a major recession, which could place a great deal of stress on the American economy. Over the course of this video, we're going to cover all the steps that have been taken by the Environmental Protection Agency, Congress, and the White House since March that have put us on the doorstep of an overhaul of the trucking industry, all in an attempt to reach net zero emissions. However, if before we kick things off, you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up on this video and subscribing to our channel, that would be much appreciated. All right, let's get into it. At the beginning of the year, the EPA proposed new rules that aim to cut any and all smog forming in greenhouse gas emissions from heavy duty vehicles. However, when they proposed these new rules, they added that it would not be pushed forward until after August when the Climate and Spending Inflation Reduction Act got announced. As it was expected, this bill would speed up America's transition to electric heavy duty vehicles. An official for the EPA, Joseph Goffman, told Reuters, quote, The big change here is the Inflation Reduction Act. Congress definitely sent a very strong message backed by significant resources. And backed by resources, he means a whole bunch of money. Now, am I out to lunch, or is the concept of increasing government spending in an effort to reduce inflation something only a person who's out to lunch could come up with? Anyways, the EPA said the new heavy-duty truck standards will result in up to 25% lower carbon dioxide emissions, but environmentalists are continuing to pressure the agency to do more. An official for Sierra Club Transportation, Catherine Garcia, said, quote, It's vital that the EPA's policies match the urgency of the air quality and climate crisis. We urge the administration to move quickly to finalize the near-term heavy-duty standards. However, these are national laws being proposed. What about state rules? Well, California California has seemingly told the EPA to hold their beer and are considering new rules to require zero emission truck deployments starting in 2024 and quote, would establish a clear end date of new, medium, and heavy duty internal combustion engine vehicle sales in 2040. Leanne Randolph, the chair for the California Air Resources Board, told Reuters that they will be voting on purchase requirements for delivery fleets of 50 or more vehicles to transition to zero emission purchases. Her reasoning, quote, they need to transition to zero. So what has happened with all of these proposals? Well, according to Freight Waves, the Biden administration will soon issue new tailpipe emission standards for trucks that will affect the vast majority of truckers. Some in the industry are starting to warn these regulations will heavily burden the American economy while we're also headed into a recession. The way the EPA is proposing to curb greenhouse gas emissions in the meantime before the eventual adoption of electric heavy duty vehicles is to add new nitrous oxide standards for heavy duty duty truck engines in either a one or two step process. The two step process, which is the EPA's preferred option, is to set a stringency increase in model year 2027 and then a second increase in model year 2031. The other option, which is a one step process, would be to immediately jump to full implementation of a nitrous oxide standard in model year 2027. According to the EPA, the two-step process would lower truck emissions by 90% compared to current norms. However, the people these regulations will affect are saying that the costs will outweigh the benefits. David Owen, the president of the National Association of Small Trucking Companies, whose members own an average of 10 trucks, said, quote, If the proposed rule, either option, is adopted, many if not most carriers and truckers will opt to keep the vehicles they have for longer than they otherwise would have. Small business truckers and general cannot afford to buy brand new power units, which today cost around $140,000. New vehicles complying with the proposed rule as of model year 2027 will cost significantly more, reflecting the sophisticated new technologies that enable their engines to meet the new standards and requirements. A period of inflation-fed cost increases in new technologically complex systems still working out the bugs. So, for the large percentage of carriers having 20 or fewer trucks, the new vehicles will be even less of an option. These carriers will remain in the used heavy-duty truck market. Todd Spencer, the president and CEO of the Owner Operator Independent Driver Association, agreed that both options will force manufacturers to speed up the production timelines, which will mean that trucks adhering to the new standards will be unaffordable for most. 
He said that, quote, any final rulemaking must better prioritize affordability for owner-operator drivers who will be required to purchase and install new equipment. This rulemaking must ensure that drivers and carriers who are investing in new vehicles are getting a fair deal and will not be constantly sidelined from their profession due to costly and repeated breakdowns. This is something I'm sure most drivers who have driven on both sides of the major emission changes that happened about 15 to 20 years ago can empathize with this notion of costly maintenance. After all, these changes require making the engine more complex with more sensors, and at the end of the day, that just adds more issues to the list of things that could possibly go wrong. The Environmental Defense Fund has come to the defense of the EPA's rulemaking, saying that since the Inflation Reduction Act was signed into law by President Biden, there will be billions in grants and incentives aimed at cutting emissions, including up to $40,000 towards the purchase of a new heavy-duty truck. However, I have a bone to pick with this notion that giving people essentially tax-funded rebates will ease the burden. Here's what happens when the government subsidizes something. Corporations aren't stupid, they're actually quite smart, and usually pay extreme amounts of money to have people research their potential customers, including how much they can afford to pay. So what happens if these truck manufacturers realize that their customers can afford $140,000 and that the government will give those customers $40,000 for purchasing a new vehicle? It's simple math to them. The customer can now afford to spend $180,000 on a truck. This is exactly what happened when the government announced $7,000 incentives for electric pickup trucks. The manufacturers immediately announced a price increase that directly coincided with the incentive. This is why whether it be education or vehicles, industries that are subsidized by the government are typically the most expensive. The Truck and Engine Manufacturers Association has said that the EPA's proposed first and best option is quote, not technically feasible. The EDF commission an electric vehicle market update and found that vehicle and battery manufacturers will spend more than $626 billion through 2030 to develop new EVs, including freight trucks. The Truck and Engine Manufacturers Association went on to say that option two, quote, could be the foundation for a workable rule that will meet environmental goals without stalling progress towards zero emissions vehicles or adversely affecting the nation's economy. Rick Todd, president and CEO of the South Carolina Trucking Association weighed in on the subject and said that the EPA's favorite option could not just slow environmental progress, but also jeopardize jobs saying that while this rule is directed at manufacturers, at the end of the day, it's up to trucking companies to buy new technologies, which determines the success or failure in the implementation of every trucking emission regulation. You can tell this is a legitimate concern considering how many drivers refuse to move on from their pre-emission CAT engines in older Detroits, etc. It boggles my mind that the policymakers don't understand the concept of innovation before implementation, enforcing through harsh regulations rarely ever meets their goals and tends to make the state of things worse in the process. That being said, we'd love to hear what you think. Is there any way to make this change to net zero and enforce extreme regulations without causing economic suffocation in the process? Let us know in the comments below.